Hello you guys and welcome back to another video. So I got a haircut and this will be in an upcoming video. I just wanted to rush this video because as you guys know, Halloween is around the corner and I kind of lost track of the days. As you guys know, time flies and October's almost over and I'm trying to get this video out for you guys. So I figured let's push all the other videos back and upload this one because... Is about to get spooky today. So I asked you guys on Instagram to share your paranormal slash spooky stories and you guys gave me the tea. So I'm gonna read y'all stories and I'm gonna include my story as well. So I'm excited. Before we do that, I do want to show you guys a easy, quick and easy Halloween look. And then I want to make some hot cocoa and then we're gonna close the blinds, turn a candle on, and read the stories. It's gonna be a real spooky, so hang on tight. <laughs> Obviously, as you guys can tell, I already started my makeup. I didn't want to waste you guys' time. I just wanted to show you guys the Halloween look real quick. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do spider webs on both of these eyes. And I'm not, I'm a basic makeup person, so I've, I don't really try any crazy look so this is nothing crazy this is an easy makeup look and of course i got this idea from tiktok okay so this is not credits to me credits to the creative people on tiktok okay i'm a little nervous guys <laughs> i'm so nervous okay so we're gonna do the first wing right here now there's different methods that i've seen on tiktok you can either use this for the web or you can just wing it i'm gonna try to wing it because i think it might be easier to just wing it but you know we're gonna do the first line like straight out of your eye socket <laughs> oh my god this damn eyeliner this eyeliner is so you want to use a like a skinny eyeliner mine is very i think this is the only liquid eyeliner i have though so i mean that's good enough if you have to clean it up clean it up Mine's not going to be perfect. I already know. Oh, okay. I got another one. JK, I got another one. So this one is the Essence Super Fine Eyeliner Pen. Okay, I think I got it. It might be a little big, but... Okay, start over. Start over. Unless, I guess I can make it work. Nah. Nah, we're going to start over. Okay, that's huge, but... We're gonna roll with it for now. We're gonna do the spider web like that. Okay, then we're gonna do the other one. Because that's my second one right there. Branched it out. I feel like I branched it out too out there. This is why I don't do these makeup looks because oh God. I'm just I suck. Okay, that's as good as it gets for me. That's as good as it gets. And then we're gonna create the little spider web. So we're gonna do a swoop. <laughs> a little swoop. At this point, I don't have anything else left to do but laugh. <laughs> Should I just cry? Let's start over, for real, for real. Let's just start over. Let me get a makeup wipe. And I'm keeping the footage too, okay? We want to be raw and honest here. I suck at this so bad. This is what I have so far. Got those two lines. This is as good as we're going to get it. I mean, from afar, does it look bad? I'll be honest. Okay. This is the best I'm gonna do. I don't care if some of the areas look skinny, some of the areas look thick. Listen. Now we gotta do one more line. I if I screw it up, we're scrapping this. <laughs> and it's not gonna match the other eye, by the way. So don't even this not 
If you're looking for a makeup guru, this is not that. Mm -mm. This is not that. This is not going to be even. Okay, that's the best we're going to do. I. It's not horrible. I'm thinking of just doing that one eye. I'm... Dare I try the other eye? Should I even do it? Should I even set myself up like that? If you're really an expert, you could add glitter to it. So all you need to do is go to TikTok or YouTube if they have it or whatever. And search up spiderweb makeup. Okay? Okay, see this is what I meant by it's not going to be even. But do you guys think this one looks better? Let me finish it up and you guys can tell me which one looks better. We're literally done. I am done. I'm not even going to fix anything. Am I aware that they're not even? Of course. I told you guys that we're not going to be even. Let's move on with our lives. They don't look anywhere near similar. All right. That is enough for me. Okay, while I let this kind of sit in there, I'm going to use a black eyeliner to line my lips. Because I don't have a black, what's it called, uh, lip liner. I really line my lips, but we're going above and beyond today. So I've lined my lips black, and you can actually use black lipstick or whatever. I have this black one from Fenty, but I'm not going for that look, but you could do that. I also have brown. That would be cute too, but I am going to do red wine color. I have this red one from Clinique. I believe this was a free sample. I mean, a free gift from Sephora. So look. And then we're blending that out. And it's giving me this really dark, vampire-y look. All right, now I am done. I added some, I don't really have any spooky earrings, but I added some of these green. Let me know down below if you guys are gonna try this look or what other look you guys are gonna try. I do know TikTok has a lot lot of great semi easy ones i thought this was easy but for me it turned out to be a little more complicated but i guess it just depends on your hands i guess i don't know also added a little outer corner eyeliner if you guys can tell my eyes kind of looks like a cat eye look so if you want to spice it up you can do that i also saw people putting a little glitter or i don't know like little glitter dots. I don't know. But you can do so many things with this look. This is just where I went with it. Now let's head into the kitchen for some hot cocoa. Here's what you're going to need for your hot cocoa. Any hot cocoa mix, if you want to make your own, great. But this is the lazy way. I got Swiss Miss right here. We got some milk. And then I'm going to add these. These are some white chocolates. I will insert a clip of the packaging. So really the way I do this, I kind of just eyeball it. I already turned on the thing because, listen, you got no time to waste. I kind of just eyeball it with how much hot cocoa you want. I'm only making this for me. So I'm not putting too much milk, but enough to where I got a little bit left over. So this is what it's looking like right there. I have it on low to medium heat right now. Yeah, we're going to let it get hot first. And once I think it's hot, I kind of just touch it. I give it about five, six minutes and then I touch it and that's usually hot. And that's when I'll go ahead and add in these. I will say if you add these, you will not need any sugar. Trust me on that. These are sweet. These are white chocolate. These this is sweet okay if you're not using white chocolate then add some sugar to it another thing you could also add at the end just just because it's better to add at the end that way all the flavors kind of melt in add in some marshmallow and then mm, you're good to go i don't want to add any today after you see that the milk is hot then we're going to add the okay i'm going to add the chocolates now i'm not going to add all of them again they're very powerful. Yeah. Oh, damn. I added like 10. Let me add the little crumbs. A little crumbs at the bottom. It's going to be tasty. You don't need to add a lot to get that sugarful, tasty flavor. And then I'm going to stir it. Make sure that's melting. 
If you wanted to, you could taste the milk, but. Ooh, it's good. Now, if you get this kind, it says to add three. If you get this, um, this big one like me, I'm extra like that, so. But if you get the regular ones, I'm pretty sure they come in little packages. Just throw the package in there. Because with marshmallows, do the package first and then let that do its thing. And then about three, four minutes later, then add the marshmallows and go from there. So I'm going to add, it says to add three. For me, I'm going to be extra. What are you doing? I'm going to add four tablespoons. One. And then, of course, we're going to mix that in, stir that in. And I know I'm not showing you guys the pot, but honestly, this is so easy, guys. So easy. And it's going to mix in pretty fast. It's basically already dissolved and mixed in together. And, of course, you can always give it a taste test. Another thing you can do at the end Depending on what season you're in, of course, we're in October, but right on, right around December or in December, you could get some candy cane and put a candy cane in there. You can put whipped cream on top of it. I might do that. That sounds so good right now. I mean, it's really all up to you. And then you can get some graham crackers with it and go crazy. I don't have those with me right now, but if you did, that's another thing you could add to the mix and it would be delicious. Whatever floats your boat, do it. Even if it's a weird combo. Listen. Oh yeah, right there. And that's what I'm talking about. You don't need to add, you don't need to add any sugar with this white chocolate now. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna put this away. In the spirit of Halloween, we are getting out my little, my little Disney mug. We got the Mickey Clubhouse in the building. You see, I got this mug from TJ Maxx probably like two years ago. And that's, that's about it. Before I forget. Ooh. And it's as easy as that, you guys. Now let's go. You ready for the spooky stories? I know I said that we're gonna make this room spooky, but honestly, it it just not working out so we're gonna act like it's pitch black in here and i try to set up the vibe back there i try so let's start with the first spooky story grab your hot chocolate grab your tequila grab whatever and let's begin this one's a little long we're gonna keep everything anonymous i used to hang out on the train tracks with my friends when we were kids all right we had a friend, this homeless man named Craig. He was cool. He used to buy us beer and cigars, lol. How old were you? These are the, these are the things that I'm like, I'm questioning. Like, mm. Okay. Anyways, the train was coming, so we were all sitting down smoking. Oh, I'm going to have to beep that out. We were smoking on the floor, okay? The train was loud. But out of nowhere, you started to hear laughing. <laughs> I had to add the sound effects. <laughs> We're not in budget yet to add to have added sound effects. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's get serious. This is spooky. Not a normal regular laugh. It was a high pitched laugh. It was creepy. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. <laughs> ah, ah. I guess I did a lower pitch. It would be ah. Okay, so ah. Imagine that. Why do I kind of sound like SpongeBob? You know when they go, they're opening the little box. Okay, we're getting to that suspense. Not a normal regular laugh. It was high pitched. It was creepy. It was like a witch's laugh. But the only thing there was the train. So I was kind of drunk, mind you. I'm like 14 at the time. So, he, you were 14 and you were drinking beer and so, I mean, I don't judge you. I, mean, I, I don't even want, I, why am I acting like, I'm acting like I'm your mom and I'm finding out some crazy news. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so this person was drunk, kind of drunk. 
they were 14 at the time. I turned around because it seemed like it was only me that heard the laughing, but it was faint at first. But I've always liked to be aware of my surroundings, you know. So as I turned around, it got louder and louder. And I noticed something on top of the train in like a white dress. The train was moving pretty slow at the moment, and as I focused on the thing on top of the train, I heard it laugh even louder, even more, and all of my friends got quiet. So I guess he wasn't the only one that heard it. You know, whenever you hear something or you see something paranormal, if you've ever experienced that, but you don't want to tell anybody else because people are, might think that you're crazy, and it's like, let's say... You end up telling your family years later, oh, this happened, and they're all like, oh my god, yes, yeah, same. Why can we all come together and say what happened? Do we all think that we're just crazy and just seeing things, that we're just going to dismiss it? I would definitely need to talk to a therapist about that. I would be scared. I would need to talk to somebody. Mm -mm. Okay. I turn back to the train and see it's a woman on top of the train in a white dress. And she jumped off the train, but not like a normal jump, more like a alleviated jump as she came down. So, you know, like a, I would say UFO, but I've never seen a UFO. Just imagine a levitating lamp and the little thing in there like that. They kind of go down. I'm sure we all know what levitated means, but you never know educational purposes and I couldn't believe what I saw it was scary she had yellow bright eyes and creepy sharp teeth and we ran like h-e-l-l because she started screaming loud ah! something like that it just way louder I ran for my life it was unreal I didn't turn back Shh. I wouldn't either I would I swear you guys know those scary movies where the people are always like looking back or they always want to go back and save somebody like, mm -mm, nope, oh, if it's a demon in there, good luck. I'm not coming back. Good luck. Whatever's in that house, I don't want it because, you know, items can get possessed too. So mm -mm, you can you can keep it. You can keep it house. Nope. That'd be so scary though. You turn around, it's like right behind you. Oof, scary. My friend started to scream loud. She's coming. She's coming. And lucky we all got out from under there. Except for Craig, the homeless guy. Maybe like a week later, we went back down during the day to see what happened to him. And he wasn't there, so we waited, but he never showed up again. All of his stuff was still there, untouched from the last night we were with him. He had a homeless son, also, that we knew. But he wasn't heard, but he hasn't heard from his dad, neither. We don't know what happened to him. Dot, dot, dot. That's crazy. That's that's actually that's so scary. I can't imagine. But I feel like train tracks can be related to something dark. Cause some people commit suicide and throw themselves on the train. But there's probably a lot of dark energy there. You said she had sharp yellow teeth and what let me see. She was wearing a white dress. I want to know what white symbolizes when you see these ghosts because a lot of my family member, family members have experienced paranormal things and they always talk about somebody in a white dress which I will get to later. I will share one story. So what does the white dress symbolize? I'm wondering. Is it a mother? Is it somebody that got married? Confused. Yellow bright eyes. That sounds like a demon. I don't know. That's That's... I'm just glad you got out of there alive and you're good. I'm really sad for Craig though. I know some people will be like, oh, it wasn't par paranormal, maybe something, maybe because he was homeless, he went somewhere else, blah, 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 like, no. From what I can tell from the story, Craig was always there. You could tell Craig was gonna be there. But after that night, when they saw that lady in the white dress, that was the last time they saw Craig. And that's so sad. And his stuff was on touch. So that leads me to believe he is dead because if he was moving to somewhere else, he would have at least taken a couple of his stuff and let his son know where he was, I think. I watch a lot of Law & Order, so this is all speculation. Next story. This one is pretty short. This one says, 
I fell into a tomb in Mexico, which led to spiritual events in my life. Which, that's so broad. Can you elaborate? How do you fall into a tomb? Tomb, you know, my English is not the best. How do you fall into that? That's, how do you get out of there? Well, I, I, I mean, I doubt you're alone because if you're alone, then that would even be so more scary. Ugh, how do you get out of there? Ugh. Now I'm gonna share my paranormal experience. I'm gonna sip a little bit of this. Every time that I think about this, I don't get scared, but I wish I got some answers. So me and my mom had just moved into our first house. It was a small house and my mom worked a lot. It was just me and my mom at the time and I had a dog. And he's, he's fine by the way. He's still alive, he's good. I had my dog named Toby with me. Since my mom worked a lot of hours, she would leave really, really early in the mornings. She would leave about, I wanna say, she would leave at six o'clock in the morning and she would get back home around seven, sometimes eight. So pretty late. Where she worked was really far from where we lived. So it was about an hour to her job and an hour back to the house. There was a lot of events that led up to this night. I'm a big believer that dogs can see things that we can't. A lot of times Toby would just be barking at the door, he would just look at the door and bark at it and I would be so scared. I would be so scared because that's so specific, you know what I mean? Several times I saw the handle of my door move. Mind you, this was before I even had a phone. I had an iPod at the time, so I had no way of contacting my mom because I was using text free and I didn't have any minutes and I had no way of contacting the police. Not that I guess you would call, but I don't know. Like whoever you would need to call in an emergency, I couldn't call anybody. I could only text. I'm low-key getting traumatized all over again just thinking about it. And to me, this is scary. So I can't imagine going through what the first person story was because that would just, I would need therapy after that. Since that used to frequently happen where the door would start moving and it seemed like somebody was trying to get into my room. And I always had the door locked for that reason too. I would lock the door until I heard my mom knocking on my door. Or if I heard the garage, even though it was kind of far from my room. Or if I heard her voice, just anything. Or if I heard her heels coming into the house. Just something to let me know that was her. And sometimes when I had the balls, because that's what, that's what I'm going to call it. When I had the balls, I would step out of my room and be like, "Who is? who's there? What do you want? What do you want? I would be like, what do you want? Because at one point I was just so tired of feeling scared. Like I said, I wish I got answers. And I was just like, what do you want? What do you want from me? I mean, I'm just a kid. Then a lot of times there was kind of like a shadow under my door. You know how you can see the little, when you close the door, you can see the little clear shadow of the hallway, I guess. If you have the light on, you can see it clearly. Well, for me, I always left the hallway the hallway light on and right under my door it was always like there was something there like there was like feet standing right there by the door you know what I mean it was a little dark in one area so yeah I tried to get some answers from whatever was going on in that house but nobody ever said anything which I'm glad I know I say I want answers but a lot of things are just better left unsaid uh, it's, it's better that way but you know when you're a kid this one night I'm waiting for my mom and it's a weeknight so like I told you guys she's usually home by 7 or 8 the max and it was 7 she was home I was like okay alright you know sometimes she works a little later then 7.30 came around, I'm starting to get a little concerned, but, you know, it's not 8 yet, so I'm not going to worry too much. Then 8 came around and nothing, and I was texting my mom and nothing. She was not answering, nothing. So, I'm worried now. I'm really worried, and I told you guys I don't really have any way to call anybody. So, how, what, what do I do, you know? Then, for some reason, 
I just, you know, I'm a kid. I just decided, hey, let me dig around in the house and see if I can find out where she is. Didn't find anything in her room. Then I decided to go on Google and search up any car accidents, anything that matched her car description, anything by her job. I searched her name up, nothing came up. I'm like, okay, I'm not finding anything. At this point, I'm in the kitchen just freaking out. And on the side of the fridge, you know where you can put the magnets? On the fridge that we had at the time, you couldn't put any magnets on the main doors that you open. It was just on the sides. So, I kind of just glance. I just so happened to kind of glance over. And I see a picture of my mom when she was younger. And she's not really the type to do any type of magnets or any pictures of herself and put them on the fridge. So I thought that was weird. I was like, okay, let me look at this picture. I I just so happened to just look at the picture. I'm like, okay, let me look at the picture. When I tell you guys, the picture said missing. It was a picture of my mom when she was young and it said that she was missing. And I, I was so scared at that moment, guys. I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, what? Like, is this some sick prank that my mom put here because this is not funny that's not funny at all so i'm crying i'm freaking out i don't know what to do i go outside and i actually see a cop car but one thing that my mom has always taught me never ever ever tell a cop that i'm home alone especially because she always embedded in my brain that if a cop ever found out that i was home alone that she was gonna go to jail or whatever whatever right so I was like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. Again, I don't have a phone. Should I stop this cop car? Should I let them know what's going on? I said, you know what, no. Let me just go back in the house and text her boyfriend. So I text my mom's boyfriend. And I say, hey, have you heard from my mom? Blah, 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 blah. And he says, no, I haven't heard from her. I was actually texting and calling her. She hasn't been answering my phones, my calls, nothing. And I said, me too. It's weird. She should be home by now. She's not home. And he said, okay, I'm on my way over right now. And he lived far too. He lived far. So he's on his way over. And I explained to him the picture that I saw on the fridge. And I asked him, I was like, hey, was that you that put that picture there? You know, just be honest. And he said, no, he didn't know what I was talking about. So that was that. Again, I'm just here looking at this picture and I'm so mad because... If it wasn't my mom's boyfriend, and I doubt it would be my mom, why would my mom do that? I, my mom is not a unserious mom. She's very serious and strict at the time. So she would not play those pranks on me. That would not be funny. If it wasn't my mom, if it wasn't her boyfriend, then I got really mad because I said it has to be the damn ghost. So, I'm yelling in the house, cursing at the house. Just, you know, just in, just in the house yelling by myself. I, I'm like, what did you do? What did you do to my mom? What happened? Do you think this is funny? This is not funny. Why would you do this? I was just mad. Just yelling at the house. Just yelling at nothing. I don't know. Nothing happens. About 45 minutes later, her boyfriend pulls up. And just as he pulls up, my mom pulls up too and boy can you guess where she was she said that her phone died and she went out to eat with her friends she's never been irresponsible so i would have never thought that her phone died and she went out to eat with her friends because again it was a week night as well so she most likely would do that on the weekend not during the week because you don't know, have school the next day and all that. So, but you know, nobody's perfect. I'm not blaming her. But at the time, I was blaming her because, you know, why didn't you text me? Why didn't you tell me where you were going? Blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you find a charger? You know, all these things. Because, you know, I was crying. I was crying. And then there was a picture. And then when everybody calmed down, <laughs> me, when I calmed down, I asked her about the picture. I told her about the picture that I found. Is it missing? And. I confronted her about it. I said, tell me if this was you. Because if it was you, that's not funny. She said it wasn't her. And I showed her the picture. And she said, that's weird. That's, I don't know why the picture says that. 
I, I don't I don't know. Nobody had answers, by the way. Nobody had answers to how the picture ended up on the fridge, why the pictures had missing, nothing. And I guess that was the only thing that happened to where I feel like it made contact with me or tried to scare me or whatever the case. But I definitely believe that it was not a human that wrote that. So I would put that on my category as as paranormal because I told you guys there was a lot leading up to that moment, you know. And I'm glad that we moved out of there the year after that because uh -uh, I just that place something wasn't right. Just something wasn't right. So yeah, that is my paranormal story even though i didn't see anything i'm sure something is going down over there before i leave let me tell you guys my sister's story this is from my sister's point of view and then we'll get you out of here i hope you guys are not too scared i don't feel like anything was super scary but this was back in venezuela that's where i'm from that's where we're both from and we lived in an apartment at the time and everybody oh i just thought of something i actually have another story from my aunt and then i'll let you guys go i promise that one's really good everybody's sleeping including me because at the time we all had our own rooms she was about nine i was probably seven or six i was really young and in that apartment it's always about hallways, creepy hallways. And in that apartment, there was this long, long hallway, guys. This really long hallway where at night, if you don't have that light on, it's super scary. Because it's so long. Like, I'm telling you guys, it's so long that it's actually spooky at night. I'm not gonna lie. Like, spooky at night to go down the hallway. My sister is grabbing laundry back and forth, back and forth. As she kept going back and forth from the laundry room to her bedroom, it was a it was a little walk, by the way. It was I don't want to say it was far, but it was a walk. So she did that a couple times. Well, when she went and grabbed the laundry one last time, as she got to the bedroom, she told me that she saw a woman in a white dress in her bed, just laying there, and she ran out of that room, and that was it. Now. My sister will tell you too, even to this day, because she still lives there now. She'll tell you that there's still stuff going on over there. So that place is definitely haunted by something. I do have one more, and this one is really, really scary because I was there. Sort of. Technically. This was back in the days. This was in Venezuela as well. My aunt, my mom's sister came into town and she was staying in the guest room which was really far off from all the other bedrooms which is one of those just far off bedrooms compared to the rest of the bedroom okay and this was at the same apartment too this was at the apartment where my this is the same apartment that my sister saw that lady it's the same apartment Anyways, we went into town to do something, all of us, as a family. Me, my mom, my sister, and my mom's sister. And there was this lady passing out a free book. And my aunt said, ooh, I'm interested, I'll grab it. So she grabbed the book. I can't remember if she read the title of the book or what, or she just took it because it was a free book. I can't remember all of that. But she took the book. Mind you, I was in the car. I was in the car when all of this happened. So that's why I kind of remember. She grabbed the book and she took it home. And she told us it was basically a demon book. You know, one of those books that tells you about demons or the devil or whatever. And she just told us, oh, that's what it's about. I'm going to go to my room and read it. And we were like, okay. So we, me, my mom, and my sister stayed in my mom's bedroom. And we were just there chilling in her room. And my aunt went to her room, which I told you guys was secluded. Very, very far away from the rest of the house. Like I told you guys, it's kind of about... It's right next to the laundry room, which I told you guys, my sister, it's a little walk. Yeah, it's a little walk. So now let's switch to her point of view because from here on out, I was not there, but I was in the house. So from what she tells it, my aunt was reading the book in her bed when all of a sudden the bed starts shaking. And she said it elevated a little bit, 
and then it went back down to the floor. And after that, she ran out of the room and came running straight to us, yelling and crying. Cause I remember, I remember her yelling. I can't remember what she said, but she was just, she came over to us yelling and crying. And she said that book was evil, blah, blah, blah. And looking back on it, I don't know why she would even have accepted a free book about demons. That's, that's just inviting bad stuff to your house, our house. And after that, she grabbed the book and burned it. Now that I think about it, both of my, both sides of my family have, have experienced a lot of paranormal stories. With that being said, you guys, I'm going to leave it all here. I'm already getting spooky. I'm glad I didn't turn off the light because I definitely don't have the strength to turn off the light and do this with the lights out. That's too scary. With that being said, I would love to hear any of your paranormal slash spooky stories or if you know a friend that has had a paranormal experience that you guys want to share please share it down below i just want to say now happy halloween you guys make sure you guys have fun please please be safe halloween night people decide to commit crimes because they can dress up and a lot of people dress up and it's just hard to identify you know all this stuff you know just so just be safe have fun and don't forget to take pictures of your costume and let me know down below if you guys are going to try out this spider makeup or any type of spooky makeup for halloween i'd love to hear from you and with that being said i will see you guys on my next video bye